Von Nola, baby. How's it going? This is Vaughn Nolan, and you're watching Vaughn Nolan TV. And today I have a special guest by the name of Sully Bricks. He is an artist, speaker, and a writer. On his YouTube channel, he has 20 million views, 309,000 subscribers, and he is known for his number one video that I think is number one video, Why I Hate School But Love Education, which has 7 million views on his channel. So, just give a quick a little more about Sully Bricks. You know, he's a spoken word artist, and he has very good work very good inf um, motivational inspiring words that touches not just me but other people around the world you know he's an artist who is just trying to inspire a generation through art so Sully sir do you have anything else I missed out or left out of that introduction of you ah that's cool man that's perfect I'm good man all right so one thing that I I found like I guess a the, like I said, your, your video, um, that's, how yeah. I, that's how I originally came across you like a few years ago. Why I hate school, but love education. Um, yeah. What, because you have a law degree, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, what was the the spark that made you make that video? I, I mean, I guess it, the, the spark was kind of as a result of having a law degree. I think I, I had, I was in a position to have two percent, um, a wider perspective of what education actually is and what it entails and I felt like as a, a person who's just graduated and who's got a law degree I'd be what the epitome of what society would 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 classify as educated mm -hmm. but I didn't feel educated so then I started reading outside of my law degree outside of what I'd been taught and then I started to feel empowered through education you know for, for me that was the first time I was feeling empowered as an educated individual so then I realized there's there's a disparity disparity between what is viewed as traditional education and what education actually is so I was like okay I've been in school my whole life I've never felt educated I've come out of school and now I'm learning so much shit I'm like okay then you know um, then there's definitely a differentiation between education in school and education in learning. So that's where kind of the idea came from. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you said that you've been in school your whole life and then when you left school, you actually started learning. Um, mm. I have been through a similar situation. Like when I joined the military, and they, I've been living overseas since 2008. And ever since been living overseas, I have actually been <laughs> learning more. Because yeah. I, you know, I, I went to college two years before I joined and I said, you know what? I need to leave college, join the military, and I've been living overseas. Ever since being overseas, my view on the world, my my education of the world has grown big, big time. So, like, yeah. I, I feel you on what you're saying. It's like, I spent all, it's pretty much you like, why did I spend all that time in school when I could have just been traveling? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and learning. Like, you said in one of your videos, like the magic school bus. And, you know, they didn't learn in yeah. class, they learned yeah. out in the field. <laughs> the time versus money. Yeah, and and reason why I like that video is because uh, right now I kind of I run a shop, and I'm in charge yeah. of guys, and I, and I always even my wife I say hey look, time to me is more important than money. Like if push comes to shove, you can always make money, but time you can't make that. You can't create so, time. So like, what was like when you made that video? What was the um, what was the behind the scenes the the thought that went into it? Um, I guess the, the the content itself about you know comparing the minutes as money, look at, looking at your minutes as money. That concept's not original to me. It was, it was, I read my uh, my wife actually introduced me to it, and she was telling people about it, and I was like, this makes so much sense. And I and then it's like I've always agreed with that, but I've never had the kind of exact words to put it together. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that concept, I was like, okay, I know how to interpret this in a way which everyone else can understand, because it was like. To be honest, I was thinking of one of my friends in particular when I made that video. So when I made that video, I wasn't really talking to a YouTube audience. I was specifically talking to one of my friends in particular. And he was like, he spent so much time. He's such a talented individual, so much potential, but he spent so much time whittling away that that that, that abilities. And he spent so much time whittling away just because I need to work here. I need to do this job. I need to get paid. You know, I need to do that. I need to do this. And I was like, yo, bruv, listen, all that money you're going to make it's not as valuable as the time you're wasting. 
by not by not building yourself you know you can be i think you could be a poor man but if you if you're if you have a wealth of knowledge you're always going to be rich you know what i mean but if you if you have a wealth of money that money can always go and if you don't have the know-how and the, and, the, and the intelligence or of self or, or character you're never going to be able to make money you know what i mean mm. so i think the exchange is that time is always going to be more valuable than money it's like it's indispensable and it's, it's, it's what is what we really want when you really think about it, you, you 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 buy money so you can have you want to get rich so you have more freedom to do what you want to do. Right. So why are you working in reverse? Mm. <laughs> As yeah, that makes sense. Why are you working in reverse? <laughs> yeah. As and that's though that your wife put you on to the to help you put that together. Oh yeah, no, yeah, she puts me on to a lot of a lot of the stuff, man. You know what they say: behind every man is a great woman in it. So what? That is true. That is true. So. Um, another one of the videos that I found interesting in that, so I'm here in South Korea, and here parents, the in the video I'm talking about is like the one you put, parents are the hardest people to please. I yeah. Don't know, I don't know how much you know about like Korean or Asian culture, but when it comes to parents being the hardest people to please, I feel like over here in Korea and in Japan, especially here in Korea, that is a, that is a video I think needs to be shared over here because a lot of kids stress out because they want to please their parents and their parents yeah. their parents stick their kids with these like high expectations that the children start having like real issues some of them commit suicide some of them turn into hermits some of them just don't want to go out into the world because they're afraid of letting their parents down yeah and i thought the u.s was bad no over here it's, it is extremely bad but um so like Explain like what what was the um, inspiration for that video behind that one? I mean, I think I, I'm I'm vaguely familiar with um, Asian culture in that respect, yeah. but it's very synonymous with African culture as well. Whereby, in because I'm uh, my family, my heritage from Ghana, you know, mm -hmm. so I spent a few years there when I was younger, and it was very much in that culture, especially my friends from Ghana. The emphasis on whatever your parents say goes you know i mean you can't you can't think outside that box that your parents have created for you yeah. and as soon as you step out of it which i had to do um to get to where i was it's kind of like it's taboo and you know you can't operate and then every day you're feeling guilty it's like you know in some ways they become like some kind of god to you and you have to feel like you have to serve their every will and then it got to a point whereby for me to find success i had to step outside of that box you know mm. and have my parents think around me what we had to go it was a two-way exchange in it rather than just one way transaction so i felt like i needed people to know that yo it's like but i wanted parents to know more that it's a two-way conversation it's not one way or the other you know what i'm saying yeah and then that's where that came from yeah and my my mom and dad they wasn't as strict like that and i think they understood like okay we have to give these boys some some ability to communicate back and forth and yeah. so my question is when you did step out just outside your box how did your your family your parents initially take that man like <laughs> we, we had fights like it was real man i mean my um, my mom I spent my, my dad is pretty laid back guy but my mom kind of lays the law in the house mm -hmm. so it was kind of like it was real like we really had like fights over everything fights over like consistently and it's like it compounded the issue the fact that I'd graduated and I had a law degree. Yeah. And in her opinion, I was wasting my life and I was wasting my degree. You know, even to the point where even my wife's even got to explain it to my wife's parents. You know, what I mean, it was still a big taboo that like, yo, we think you should be doing this and you're not doing this. Mm -hmm. but obviously, in the end, you know, when it works out, it pays dividends because I feel like that changes the culture of your generation. You know, I think. Yeah. It, that, that little thing I think someone in your family has been able to do that it changes the culture of your entire generation and now there's not as much pressure in any of my siblings I'm not any or any of my like cousins or anything to 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 be like yeah it's just one way do this and that's it yeah because because like <laughs> our the generation before us they 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 they, they, they come, they're going off a barbaric system they're yeah not, they're not they're not moving with the ages where okay like you could be a video gamer. The things that our parents gave us a hard time about, you can make money off of. Like, yeah, you can make money off now, innit? What? I feel like with just them, I guess with them, they had to also deal with the, the issue of survival as well. Because mm -hmm. with those things was like, they had to, that, that was how they survived, you know? I mean, the political and social economic kind of structure was different, you know? Yeah. I mean, they had to face like racism, they had to feel, yeah. they couldn't get a job even if they wanted one, you know what I mean? Even if they were highly qualified, so yeah. it's like, 
they're living in a completely different time zone, which mm. which I appreciate in it, but they have to appreciate mine as well. That it's different. It's it's a bit more. There's a bit more leeway than there was there. Mm-hmm. That is true. They, they're, they're coming from a time where you had to have a professional degree to be seen as not the lesser of the black. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's and, and that goes for, I think, a few other um, races in America or in and around the world. There's not mm. like European, um, Caucasian, because, you know, they can do anything. But for yeah. us, we had to. You had to be lawyers. You had to be a doctor. You had to be an engineer. You had to be something of prestige um, profession in order to be yeah. taken serious. And then even with that, you still wasn't guaranteed nothing. It wasn't even guaranteed. You know what I mean? And it was more. It came to a point where just to even be respected among your peers, mm-hmm. you had to have some kind of professional degree. Like your peers would look down on you if your children didn't have some. Because it's like you're a failure as a parent if they, you they mm-hmm. haven't got any kind of professional qualifications. Yeah, and that's horrible. Like. Parents getting pressure from their colleagues, and then from that, they're gonna put that pressure on their children. So it's a it's a horrible cycle <laughs> that yeah, yeah, that yeah. shouldn't exist at all. Um, so in going to like current events, and one video you posted that is reflecting on what's going on today in the world. On um, that one, you had wish I had said something. Um, I yeah. One thing I did find inter- interesting: the video was great. The the, de- the 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 info you put in the description was there's 115 attacks against Muslim girls and women aged 14 or 45, and you posted the video on October 18, so I'm pretty sure the numbers probably went up. Like to me, that seems sickening. Okay, I get it. Any hate crime is horrible, but yeah. to target women, like what? <laughs> How does yeah. that make anyone feel um, like they're good about that? You know, it's so it's so cowardly, isn't it? It's so cowardly. I mean. I'm on the phone to my little sister, and she's telling me how a grown man just pushed her friend in front of the bus because her friend was she pushed her like pushed her friend in front of a bus, and her friend said, "I almost died today." You know what I mean? And that's a grown ass man, like that's cowardly enough to to go and push like a, a young lady. You know, who's feet like it's, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's very disgusting because it's like we're people, society, not everyone, but people are like generalizing, which is horrible. Because there are people who are legitimately have no ties to any like, terrorist groups or activities. Yeah. And then when we when this stuff stuff happens, we wonder what was the cause of more people joining these terrorist groups activity. I'm like, yeah. you 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 push them into that. Their lives are now threatened. So where else are they gonna go to look for shelter? It's a cycle, isn't it? The violence just creates a cycle, man. You know, it's like yeah, it's crazy. So like, uh, it's it's an ugly world. But yet, <laughs> we paint it like it's pretty though. Yeah, we, yeah, you know. But it's 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 so sad because I feel like it's always like it's always people like it's the most cowardly people who have the most to say. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, if they really had to stick to their word and do something about it, most of those people wouldn't because you can see in, in how their their hate is manifested it towards people that are defenseless. You're right. They won't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They're not. They're not dealing with Muslim men. They're not doing that. Yeah, they wouldn't. They would. You know, what I mean, and that's ridiculous. I, you know, there's another instance where this guy they stabbed the Muslim man to death, but he's like in his 80s. He's like 90s, coming back from the mosque. Like completely, he wouldn't be able to do anything to defend himself. You know. Yeah. Like regardless of religion, regardless of skin color, cowardliness has no color. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. That's- and it's just ugly. So to talk on a lighter note, um, one thing that I've always had a dream of is mm-hmm. doing a TED Talk. One day I will be there. But you, you have done two. <laughs> two yeah, yeah, yeah. Two TEDx, um, with TEDx House of Par- Parliament. Yeah. Like, I seen the first one, and I didn't get to see the second one yet. But that alone is like, boom, baby, we made it. I'm on a TED, you're on a TED Talk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I actually, I actually did free. I did like oh. uh, one, but I haven't put the video out. Okay, yeah. so like the first one, like, what did you think? Like, was you like, oh, I got? Did they invited you? Like, what was your reaction to even being offered to get on stage and do a TED? You know, it it was a big deal, especially because it's like the Houses of Parliament. That's like our equivalent of the White House. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like. We, I mean, it, I didn't really hit until we got there and they were showing us around and they were like, let's take you through like the halls, you know what I mean? And I'm like, shit, I lived in this country my whole life and I had never been into the, like, the parliament before. Now they, they treat me like some VIP, you know? I was like, shit got real, you know? I was like, I was just walking up and down like trying, you know, because 
I'm like I'm like from inner city London, so we don't really we don't really get invited to these places, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm walking down the hallways and they're treating me like I'm VIP. They're like, yeah, where do you want to film? Where do you want? We take you here, take you there. And I was like, wow, like this is like the power and grace. Like it was it was it was a bit. That was the moment where it really hit me. When they invited me, it was kind of like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Then when I had to go in there, you know, it's like. It's like going into an airport, you know, you got to check your bags mm-hmm. through and everything. It's highly security. And then when you get in there, you're like, whoa, shit is real. <laughs> yeah, I can, only Im- I can only imagine. You And was this due to the, your video on why I hate school but love education? Was it from that one? Yeah, it was from um, another one. I will not let an exam result decide yeah, my fate. Yeah, that was, that was another good one. Yeah. <laughs> so when you get the second appearance, what was that? Was it a little bit now not as of a shock, but more you was... Were you better mentally prepared for the second and the third one, or like how did it go? I, I prefer I prefer the second one because the second one I feel like I got more freedom to say what I wanted to say. The first one I was like, that was I was a bit I was like, let me tick all the boxes they need me to tick in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whereas the second one I was kind of like, let me just do my thing in it. So I preferred the second one a lot more, and it was like, I mean, it's, it's sad how quickly a novelty wears off in it. Because first it was like. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Now it's like, I want to do my thing, you know? It's like... <laughs> but no, man, that's like, that is awesome. Because that puts you up there in the upper, you know, with people. Because like, like, TED Talk's a big deal. You know, you are yeah. on stage among other people who are highly influential, who has reached into the world, and now you have joined that tier. You know, that is something that people dream of, like myself. So you have reach the level with your hard work and your dedication to your passion to your love and that's something that i want to show people that's something the reason why i wanted to talk to you is to see that in live because you know sometimes when military people say they're separating they get a lot of negative feedback like oh it's hard out there you're gonna yeah. you know you're gonna struggle you're gonna do all this so i'm like you know what i'm tired of the negative let me start reaching out to positive people let me start reaching out to people who did have to work hard and look at them now you know, yeah. through hard work, through dedication, you can get there. And look at you, you're doing awesome. And I was, yeah, totally. So, so the my last question, what is your favorite work and why? My favorite? Your favorite work. What is your most favorite, I don't know, over, over everything you do, what is your favorite thing that you have done so far and why? That, that's, that's a bit of a tough one. Um, <laughs> My favorite one, um, I don't know, I feel like it changes all all the time. It just changes all the time because I've been writing some stuff recently. I mean, overall, I just like writing, you know what I mean? I enjoy writing before it turns into a video, before before it gets into like onto YouTube. I just love writing the stuff, you know what I mean? I love mm-hmm. expressing ideas. I think my favorite one, I, if I have to say, is like, it has to be I will not let an exam result decide my fate because that's the one where... Will Smith saw that one and I actually ended up having breakfast with him because he saw no, that video. You know no. what I mean? You can't, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't say that's not your favorite. You know what I mean? That's like Will Smith. Like he shared that and he was like, yo, so, when you're in LA, come, come, you know, let's have breakfast. I was, I'm sitting opposite Will Smith because of that video. You know, he was like, wow. Willow showed it to him and he was like, yo, I loved it. You know, I'm like, whoa. So how was, how was that experience meeting Will Smith? Like, <laughs> I, I, it's, been, it's been almost like, not a year, but maybe like six months since. Maybe mm-hmm. like almost actually maybe almost a year. And I still get like goosebumps, like just when every time I mention it. Mm-hmm. Like even when I see him like in his new movies, I still just get goosebumps thinking about it. The guy I mean, the guy's just got so much his presence is powerful, you know what I mean? And then when he talks about like he'll tell you like, Oh, this is what Nelson Mandela said to me. This is what <laughs> Muhammad Ali said to me. That's like just channeling like, you know what I mean? Who else is gonna tell you these kind you know? Yeah, that's like you you're not gonna go home to your boys and you're gonna say this is what Muhammad Ali told me, nah. <laughs> you know? Like, nah, Will Smith you know, that's that's surreal. That's, you probably was that's probably like another shock, like, wait, what? <laughs> that's, I met I met Dick Gregory as well, you know Dick Gregory. Uh uh-huh. he, he's like a comedian anyway. And I met him, we did an event and he was there and he was like, he was friends, like he was friends with Malcolm X. So he was in Malcolm mm. X, you know what I mean? And he was like to me, he was telling me like, yeah, Malcolm X was like, yeah. and I'm like, yo, this dude is like, I'm in a circle where the dude's telling me firsthand what Malcolm X was sell- telling him, you know what I mean? All those experiences, like you don't get those from from many people. So all that stuff, for Will Smith, it's just like so many different, like everybody, like, you know, is coming forward. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. So... Right now, what is like one of your 
something that's not seen on your your video content and you don't mind sharing what is one thing that you work on that I guess helps other people or helps children or whatever I, I see you know you get what I'm saying so like what is one yeah, of your yeah. projects that there's not regularly seen through the, the YouTube or whatever that you would like to talk about and share with people oh that, that's actually quite cool um, I'm, a, I'm ambassador for a brand called NCS so we, we may they're not really a brand they're like an organization so I may I may have like one video that I've collaborated with them or maybe two online but really a lot of the stuff I do with NCS is kind of like they help kids on do summer programs outside of school mm. so they'd be outside of school and they're doing like you know they're doing all these summer programs they do like canoeing they do but then they learn about stuff like networking they stay on camp they stay in campuses away from their parents and they really get an experience of like what learning is outside of just being in school if you know what I mean and that's during the summer and the summer for me is kind of like a time where like you can go so many different ways you know i mean we used to get pretty reckless in the summer yeah. so it's good that they, they, their summer's getting like productive and it's not just that they're get, they're being treated like adults and they're maturing fast so that's one of the things i, I, I love ncs I, i'm i'm also advisor for another company called um cano and cano what they're doing is they make they're building they make a computer which like a seven-year-old can build so you wow. put a computer together like lego and then it's, and it's yeah it's crazy you check it out and it's teaching kids like how to code, you know what I mean? And kids are like coding on it, and but they think they're just playing games. And I think the most powerful thing about that is it's opening kids' minds to the fact that this technology that we use, like the iPhone and stuff, yeah. you can build it. Somebody built that, you know what I mean? We normally look back in the day. We used to, before the internet, we look at these things and be like, "This is amazing. You got to be some scientist, you know?" But these, yeah. what's this showing that like this technology? You don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to study physics for 50 years. You don't have to be Einstein. You don't have to be Tesla. You can build this stuff, you know. So that's one of the the things I'm really proud of um, uh, working with them. That's dope. <laughs> like Legos. So, I mean, one day I bet I, when I have a kid, I'm like, here, put together this computer. <laughs> yeah, you put together a computer, you put together the screen, and then you just start going through all of it. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's yeah. So what are your three... You know, each person have like daily rituals, I guess you could call it. What are yeah. like what are like three of your daily rituals that contributes to your success that you would like to um, share? It's I guess I, okay, I think a lot of people one thing a lot of people do is they meditate. But I kind of I I I'd say I pray more than I meditate in the mm. sense like you, know, you take you know, I wake up and I give like a moment, I try, you know, give a moment kind of like to, to to allow yourself to know that not everything you succeed is kind of like it's favor you know it's great so a lot of the things and my wife always remind me a lot of the things you do is a result of hard work and all that kind of stuff but you you shouldn't you shouldn't you should realize that you're more fortunate than everybody else because you've had the favor or the blessing to make you achieve that in it and in that respect you then got to be like you got to be you got to look at the next person and be like I owe my I have responsibility to help them in some way because I've been blessed you know what I mean because right. I think we get to a point where it's like Obviously, we work hard and we do so much to achieve what we do. But sometimes we wake up and we're like, "Yo, I'm the greatest." But sometimes it's not you. Are, it's not because you're the greatest, because you just had things work in your favor. So you gotta appreciate that because that makes you work harder for it every morning, you know. And that's what I've <laughs> I've started doing. So it's not so much a prayer to like a specific religion or anything. It's just like a kind of like thankful thankfulness that kind of works for me in the morning. Um, Tech, I mean, working out for me is is, is, is a big thing. That I, I working out is like it's important. I don't know. It just. It, I think. I mean, obviously it's physical, but I think it's for mentally the mental benefits of working out is like you can't really you can't really compare that to anything else. And probably um, the last the last thing I um, another ritual. Um, let me think, because I don't really plan out the rituals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, a lot of people have a list of rituals. Yeah. I don't really. I'm trying to think, the last thing that I do, and ah, um, uh, yeah, this one is is it's hard to explain because I always try to get myself in a creative space mm -hmm. when I wake up in the morning. So, <laughs> and I find you you're most creative when um, when you was younger. So, mm -hmm. from a creative standpoint, the things I do is I always try to engage in something that incites like nostalgia of a younger age so sometimes you know i could wake up and i'd listen to some disney songs or i'd read like an old comic book or i'd or i'd like i'd watch a cartoon or something that something yeah. that gives that sparks that creative you know that's one thing i do every day it's not in the morning but i do that every day it's something to remind me of that childlike that malleableness i feel when you get 
the more success you have is or the more the bigger you get anything you get kind of rigid and you're like it has to be like this it becomes form formulaic but when you're young you do stuff just for the freedom of mind you know yeah. so i always say if it's not every day maybe once a week or something to engage in something which gives me that nostalgia back that is that's a real good um tip i never thought about that so once a week be it just Go try to reconnect with your childhood. Just be a child, yeah. Just be a child again, because that that's that, that's at the time where you believed you can achieve anything, yeah. And you didn't, and you and you, and you believed you could achieve it, and you wanted to achieve it, independent of how much money am I going to make, how many people, you know. What I mean, you just wanted to achieve it because it because it was pure to you, you know. what I mean, mm -hmm. and that is true. And you talked about that in one of your videos, like when with the what do you think beautiful is? Yeah. And you interview kids because, and you made a good point because kids aren't as influenced like a like us in our adulthood where we yeah. got all the negative um stuff making us not want to be pure anymore but kids are like nah i'm gonna be an astronaut slash basketball player yeah you, you know, know? <laughs> i mean we don't think things too much we go we grow up and we overthink every mm -hmm. single thing where's it gonna lead me where's it gonna go but sometimes the the, the the best ideas come from a place of like i just want to do this i just love the way it looks i just love the way it sounds i just think it's going to make this person smile Right. You know, and I think those are the best ideas. You know, what's good, man? I am um, Jason. I appreciate your time, man. This is Sully Breaks. It's been a pleasure speaking. I look forward to seeing um, any more adventures that happen in your life, and I look forward to you guys following anything I have going on. www.sullybreaks.com and sign up to the mailing list for any kind of updates or anything. All right, and thank you all for watching Vonal TV. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you comment on this video, like it and share it. This, this is a intelligent, blessed man right here who's give, dedicating his time to doing this interview with me. And I greatly appreciate it. So it's Vaughn Nola, baby. It's Vaughn Nola, baby.